too many of them and go a little bit nuts. It's just creating a little highlight coming in. Okay. Yep, I'm happy with that. And you leave it, you don't touch it. It's just suggestion. Of course, it's not a real tree, it's a painting. So we have to make sure that we're still in the spirit of the, of the um, impressionistic mindset, if you like. Now then, a couple of things I've noticed is I need to go back into the uh, Payne's Grey and kind of almost mimic where these shadows would be of the boats. And of course, these shadows coming down in the water Ooh, as the water moves, there will always be kind of wiggly, I guess. And there we go, quite blurred. It's quite nice. So, we'll leave that. So, just suggestions. Just suggesting. Now, the last little bit I want to sort out is on this, and again, it's another 12 round. Is along here, I want to kind of bring in a bank of trees that are um, a bit more defined, not so misty. And they will come in here. Just a bit of sharp edges, really all the way across because we want to remember we said about joining things up and making things um, go together if you like. And then here are just the reflections. Now what I will do is strengthen up when it dries a bit. I mean I can drop it in and show you what happens. So basically, if you have the same sort of mixtures going on, this ultramarine and or sienna. And if I drop in the paint into the sweat, so this is where the reflection is still needed up in there as well. You'll see it's starting to do its own thing. You're gonna to have to move it up slightly. Hopefully you can see all that. Yes. Um, and rather than go all the way along like painting by numbers, I've got the mix and I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue. We don't want it all the same tone and the same color. It just can get very boring if we do that. So we need to mix it up a little bit. So I was just bringing in these darker notes, I guess. And here as well, around where the boats are. Not everywhere. Let it do its thing. Lots of blending and bleeding going on there. I'm gonna go even, even darker with some more blue in here and a touch of this paint's grey as well. In and around just here. Just to keep the eye going this way. Taking that out. Now here, so just clear water, just want to show you something here. I'm just gonna go across once, just there. As you can see, just did it once and that's now blending off. Because we have to remember inflections. You do get sharp edges sometimes, but because the water's moving a lot, that doesn't happen very often unless the water's incredibly still. Now our brief said that it was calm you know, in our you know, sketchbook, but you still need to get movement, which, which we've got here. 
Now with this sort of green grey mixture, much more watered down, I just want to um, <clears throat> bring in a suggestion of some more trees here. And again, you don't want them unjoined, just looks odd. It's just given a different, slightly different tone. And obviously we're, we're leaving underpainting for, the, for the light to come through. It's a way of creating light is to let the underpainting shine through. Now here we would probably have reflection of, of light um, coming through the trees and giving off the sort of color that we had there. So we could bring in some of that localized color, as we say. Again, bearing in mind, we need to keep the light in there. In other words, the underpainting that's coming through. We're kind of getting there now. I'm quite happy with that. There's probably a few little things to fiddle around with, but virtually this painting's done. So the only things I've really done here and added to, which I haven't showed you, um, it's just a quick scratch, two scratches there and two scratches down here to, to give a bit of, of light in there and suggest that there might be some more boats further back. Um, I've been debating this area, still not quite dry, of whether to, to in the foreground to make it darker. If we, we make the tone darker, we'll push other things back. But generally, you know, I'm actually quite happy with how it is. The only thing I will show you in here is a, is a a bit of a trick. That's not so much a trick, it's just the thing that works. And that is to take a warm colour, so we've got our original mixtures here. I'm going to add in some Alazar and Crimson in here into these original mixtures that we had. That's Crimson, Alizarin, Alizarin, various ways of pronouncing it, and a touch of um, Ultramarine. So we're getting the kind of a purpley blue shadow color. And this can just come in here to warm up down this area. So I'll just show you. And it's also got the darker tone in as well. So let's take that out. Warm at the front, pushing things back, cool the colors your blues and your greys at the back, warmer colours at the front and both the ultramarine and those are in crimson. Let's get some more of that, lovely. If we go in quick we can see how nicely that's granulating in there and it, it kind of balances up with the, with the bulk of here tonally kind of echoes what's there, but this is quite a big, a big passage. Um, yeah, hopefully that's, that's working okay. Again, that will, just popping some paint in there, that will dry back lighter. And again, it's just going to push everything else back. I'll just show you these. Just a bit of a thicker one there. While it was still wet. And the imagination will then fill in all of the gaps. So hopefully you enjoyed that demonstration. Um, Keep painting, keep subscribing to me, keep liking, and please comment. Uh, give me your opinion on how you think this one turned out, and if you would have done anything differently. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. Take care now, and happy painting. Now, we say it was finally done. Um, I just want to show you a little effect with the um, spray. And so we do that. Uh, and just going to spray that on 
onto here. You'll see it start to, from quite a long way away, you can see, quite a way away, just dropping the water onto it. That's enough. Just dropping it in, so it's very fine droplets going onto the paper. And that will create its own effect. Where the paint is still slightly damp, you've got a little effect there. And if you want to blur off anything, it's always great to do that. I'll just show you that over here. We just wet that paper up there. You start to see this blend and bleed more in this area, which is quite good because this is the sharper area you want the eye to go to. So I just want to soften that off a little bit there on that side because um, it was taking the eye away. That was becoming like two focal points. So this is the one we want to go to. It's sharper there. The tones are darker. And this is now blurring and blending. Um, which will create the effect. And the very last thing to do is when this is dry, is to take all the tape off. And I'll show you that um, in a few minutes. So finally, the tape comes off. And we'll have a look see what the painting looks like.